Hi, this is Gary Rubenstein, and the purpose of this series of lectures is to teach you about uh, the main accomplishment of Sir Isaac Newton. So Isaac Newton was a great physicist, scientist, mathematician, who was born in 1642 and died in 1727. And uh, his biggest accomplishment was a book that he wrote that was called uh, The Principia which he published in the year uh, 1687. Principia is considered to be one of the most important books ever written, but uh, nowadays very few people know what, it, what it's really about or what any of the details of it are. Um, one thing that people might know is that in the Principia, Newton essentially uh, proves that planets go around the sun uh, in elliptical paths, and he also did something with what's known as the inverse square law. And that's about all most people know about that. Um, I, I went through an investigation to try to learn any of the details behind this, his, his proof or what he actually did, and um, I'm going to show you this in a series of, of lectures. It was not easy to find accessible information about the Principia. Um, I, I ended up finally finding good information in two books. Uh, the first book that I looked at was called uh, Newton's Principia, The Central Argument. Uh, this book was written uh, in about 1995, and it gave me a, a decent idea, but, but it was a very long book, and it, it was kind of hard to really get to the core of, of, of what he did. Eventually, I found a, a, a better book which is this one. It's called The Key to Newton's Dynamics, uh, the Kepler Problem and the Principia. And uh, through this book, uh, I finally understood the basic idea. And, and now I'm able to look at, the, at this other book and follow it also. But th th this was really the book that I, that I learned it from. And I'm going to take you through uh, J. Bruce Brackenridge's arguments. And uh, it, it will take a few... Uh, it will take more than 10 minutes. It will probably, probably be uh, five or six parts. And before we can really get into Newton's ideas, we have to see um, what Kepler did. So Kepler was an astronomer who lived uh, in the late 1500s, early 1600s. And in uh, 1609, Kepler published his, uh, his three laws of planetary motion that he he um, conjectured them based on observations of the of the planet Mars, and for uh, per, for, for Newton's uh, for for studying Newton, we want to see two of Kepler's uh, laws, and one of them is that if you uh, was that planets go around the sun in uh, not circles but in ellipses, where the sun is one focus of the ellipse. So that's one of Kepler's laws. Another one of Kepler's laws is that if you were to connect a, uh, a line segment from the center of the sun to the center of the planet, notice if you look at this planet closely, it actually gets slower as it's further away from the sun. And as it gets closer to the sun, it speeds up. So it's going slower, and now it's speeding up. Well. What Kepler says is that uh, the planet will, they say, sweep out equal times in equal, uh, equal areas in equal times. So if I were to, if the planet uh, moves from here to here, and it takes uh, you know, some amount of, of time, you know, it takes a month, let's say, to get from, from here to here. Then in the same period of time, uh, the, the planet uh, goes slower but since it's further away from the sun, that wedge that it makes is, is, is going to be, uh, is going to still have the same area. So I'll, I'll animate this. These are two, this is the planet in two positions, sort of the same distance apart. So over here, this region here is, um, has the same area as this region here. And, and that, that's true for any of them. So that's Kepler's equal areas in equal times law. So the two laws that we've talked about so far are 
the fact that the planets go around uh, the sun in ellipses where the sun's one of the is at the foci one one foci of the ellipse and the other one is the equal areas in equal time slot now what newton's going to do is first he's going to prove the equal areas in equal times law and he's going to show that's that that's not uh, the ellipse is not part of that he's, but and then he's going to show that if the planets really go around in ellipses, as Kepler conjectured, it would mean that the force towards the sun would be inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the sun. And that's what, that's what Newton does in the Principia. He proves that if it's true, starting with the fact that the planets go around in ellipses, the implication is that the inverse square law is true. And, and a lot of people uh, figure Newton did the other thing, which would be starting from the inverse square law and proving that the planets have to be ellipses. He, he does try to prove the, uh, the converse uh, of, of the statement, but the main thing he proves is that if the planets really do go around in ellipses, then the inverse square law would be, would be true. Now Newton is going to uh, prove these theorems using other theorems developed uh, by, by two people mainly. Uh, one is Apollonius, who was a Greek mathematician, lived around 200 BC, uh, wrote a book called The Conics, which is uh, a lot about all the different properties of ellipses, hyperbolas, and parabolas. And he also is going to use some physics from uh, Italian uh, scientist Galileo. Galileo was born in 1564. He died in 1642. Uh, which was the same year that, that, that Newton was born. So it's kind of a nice uh, coincidence there. So he's going to use uh, geometry theorems from Apollonius and some physics from Galileo. Now Galileo did a lot of uh, experimentation with falling bodies and, and, he, and he noticed something uh, is that when you drop something it doesn't fall at a uh, constant velocity. But here's an animation, you can watch it. So it falls. And as you've noticed in your real life, when something starts falling, it's going kind of slow. And then it, uh, it speeds up as it, as it goes along. Galileo uh, used uh, rolled things down inclined pl planes to notice this. I'm going to put it into slow motion so we can see it a little, a little bit better. As you can see, it's going slower, and then it speeds up at the end. Well, Galileo formulated this uh, into, into a mathematical rule, which you can summarize over here with uh, the displacement is equal to uh, one-half times the acceleration times t squared, times time squared. Now, Galileo assumes that acceleration is a, is a constant. It's actually not a constant. As, as, as things get closer to the Earth, there, the force changes and the acceleration changes also. But since it's pretty close to the Earth to begin with and it stays pretty close to the Earth for the whole time, Galileo makes an assumption that acceleration is a constant. And Newton is going to exploit that idea when he does his Principia. For very small distances, uh, this is true, that distance is, uh, I could even write it this way, just that distance is going to be proportional to time squared. Um, you know, I'm going to get rid of this. That, that could just be a plus. So the amount of distance that, that it traveled is, is proportional to the square of the amount of time. And, and what this means is that if it fell, uh, if it fell one foot in the first second, by the second second, it would have fallen a total of four feet, and by the third second, it would fall a total of uh, nine feet. So that the amount it's gone altogether is proportional to the square of how much time it's been traveling. I think this will be a good place to conclude part one. Uh, I hope you stick with this. Uh, like I said, this is considered to be one of the most important sort of proofs ever ever made, but it's also one of the least known. I'm not going to rush through this. This is going to be a bunch of parts, and that concludes part one to be continued in part two.